Hi, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this Adobe Premiere Pro tutorial, I'm going to give you five tips on mastering effects. So I've got a random clip open on the timeline, and where we're going to be working in general is one on the clip, but whenever you highlight a clip, you open up the effects control panel. So this is the effects control panel. If you don't see it, you can go to window effect controls. And here is where anytime you put an effect on, you can adjust all the parameters and see what you have on there. And by default, you always have the motion parameters and opacity. So things like position, scale, rotation. So just some basics on this panel is one, you got these little drop down arrows. You can always expand out anything. And next to every parameter, you can always highlight it. There's these stopwatch icons, that's keyframes. And then these are the parameters. This is the toggle visibility on or off of the effect. And you also have in the opacity section, opacity and the masking tools. But all of that is kind of separate. Um, those I have separate tutorials on my channel that go over more individual things. In this, I'm going to give you some ideas on working with effects. So the other panel that you have is the actual selection of effects. That's on the right hand side here. Again, you can go to window effects if you don't see that. So here's where you can choose from all the different available video effects in Premiere. And then whenever you do drag any effect onto the clip, you can see it appear in the effects control panel. So don't get confused between those two effects you can pull from effect controls is where you control those effects. Now another thing you see that happened whenever I applied that effect onto the clip is this little effects badge next to the clip turns a color. So there's different colors but that's how you know that effect there's an effect on there. If there's gray there's nothing on there. If it's yellow there's just like motion or opacity effects. And if it's green there's also other effects. So if you ever right click on a clip and go to remove attributes you can see all the video attributes, whether there's motion, opacity, timer mapping, or other effects on there. And you can choose to remove all of them or just some of them. So if I just remove all of these attributes and press OK, you'll see the clip, this is a 4K clip, so it kind of scales back up. You see the FX badge turns back to gray, there's nothing on there. So these are just kind of visual clues. I'll just edit, undo that. So that's already a handful of basic tips on how to read the section. But another tip I have is the order of operation matters. So whenever you're working with effects, the order matters. So in this case, I have a mirror effect on the clip. What this effect does is it allows us to create a mirror image splitting at a certain reflection angle. So if I have a mirror effect and then I also have a twirl effect, this will allow us to kind of twirl an image. This is what it looks like if we apply the twirl after the mirror. However, if I ever just highlight these two clips and I move the mirror after the twirl, you can see this is what it looks like when the mirror is applied last. So the order of operation definitely matters. You can move around, it goes first to last. Another tip is that you can always copy and paste things. So if I just press Command C and Command V, you'll see it'll duplicate that effect and I can change the reflection angle if I want. You can copy and paste and hold shift or command and select multiple things and copy and paste them. And you can stack effects and then the order of them matters. So there's a difference between adding, you know, one horizontal flip or two horizontal flips and a, and a mirror. Additionally, if I do copy and paste a bunch of effects, I can also paste them onto another clip. So I can paste those same effects onto this clip in that same way. This also gets into presets. If for some reason I really like this mirror twirl effect I did, I can highlight all of the effects involved, right click and save a preset. And this will allow me to save a preset. If there is keyframes involved, you can choose whether to scale them across whatever length of the new clip, just begin them at the end point or and them at the out point and you can name and describe your preset and it'll show up in the presets panel. If you want, I have a full separate tutorial on creating presets that goes more into depth on the keyframe points that I made. And I also sell my own presets on my website where I've created hundreds of presets in my preset pack one and two with a bunch of different effects and transitions that 
you can just drag and drop onto clips. So this brings up a lot of different areas that are involved in effects that I'm giving you tips on right now. Another tip I have when actually working with effects, you see that I've been using these effect controls, just these sliders. I'm just clicking and dragging in and out. You can also input values by typing them in um, and change them like this visually. But another really great way to work with effects is if you just grab your selection tool or press V and make sure you're in the program window, you'll begin to visually see all of the parameters of your highlighted effect appear. So you see this little blue anchor point pop up and now I can just visually move the reflection center. It's kind of more intuitive a lot of times than working with the sliders. So in this case, I can just literally move the reflection point where I want um, for something like position or scale or rotation, I can highlight those parameters and you can see I can visually move stuff around pretty quickly rather than using the sliders to put stuff in a corner or whatnot. Another great point that goes into all the copy and pasting and presets that I've said is a lot of times you'll have the same clip or cuts from the same long clip appear in different parts of the same project. So I could have three different cuts from the same clip or the same footage in three different clips. Now, if I wanted to apply a black and white effect on all these, for example, like black, white, then I could just click and drag this black and white effect on all three, you see. However, um, there's times where I might not want to do that. There's times where I might want the clip to play like this and then for this second appearance of the clip I might want it to be black and white but then back to color in the third one so I have the option to drag individually but if I did just want kind of like the clip to be the same effects no matter where it appeared or how many times it appeared on the timeline there's this whole different tab in the effects control panel called the master effects section so if I were to drag a black and white effect instead of on the clip on the timeline onto the actual source footage in the project media panel or in this master effects section, you'll see that it'll appear in this master effects section. And you'll see this red line, this red underline pop up on the effects badge of the clip. So now, no matter how many times this clip appears on the timeline, it'll always at least have that black and white effect on it. And then if I wanted, I could add other things as well. Uh, like, you know, I could add the mirror effect just on one clip like this, but the other ones wouldn't have it. And you can see that's where the effects badge kind of helps you read. This one has a purple effects badge with the red underline. That means there's an, a video effect on it. This one has the gray effect badge, but still the red underline. That means there's the master effect is on there, but no additional attributes are on there. So all of this just gives you flexibility in working with your clips and working with effects and mastering effects really. And the last thing that uh, I'll get into that's really important is mastering keyframes. So whenever you do have an effect, you always have the little stopwatch icon next to it. So in this case, if I wanted to make the reflection center kind of gradually go from the center of the clip all the way out, I could move my timeline to a certain point where I want the effect to start, click that stopwatch icon, it's a toggle, toggle animation, you'll see it highlight blue, and you'll see this little diamond, what's called a keyframe, appear at this point in the timeline. Then if I move over however amount of time I want, and then adjust one of these parameters, like so, you'll see an animation occur from this point to this point the reflection center will move from 2000 to 2700, whatever I set it at. And if I play that, you see the reflection center slowly moves all the way to the edge of the frame because I animated it in that way. That's the very basics of what a keyframe does. It just allows you to animate from one parameter smoothly to the next. But if you ever right click on the keyframe, there's all different kinds of keyframes. So 
linear is the basic one, but there's also things like hold that'll look more like a square or a flat edge. So with these linear or with these hold keyframes, instead of moving gradually from this reflection amount to the next, it moves kind of immediately. So as soon as it occurs, this keyframe, it'll move to the new reflection center. So you go from exactly 2005, 2054, uh, immediately to 2000. 800. So we're just kind of jumping rather than moving gradually. So there's all different ways that you can use those keyframes. And again, when you save a preset, you can sit, the keyframes that you have will be involved. So if you do choose scale, it will scale this, like uh, this keyframe, this clip happens to be about 10 seconds long or 12 seconds long. So it'll say, oh, this first keyframe happens at 10% in of the clip. The second keyframe happens 50% in, in of the clip. So if you did apply the same preset with the scale method and onto a clip that was 30 seconds long, it will just apply kind of, it'll scale it out to be of the same ratio. But if you did anchor to endpoints, it'll always say oh, this first keyframe occurs at one second into the clip and it'll just have the combination of keyframes based on exact time and not scaling it. So I have tutorials that go kind of in depth on basically all of these topics individually on my channel. If you search those keywords, and if you want to get more in depth on what actually is all available in this effects panel, I also have a whole playlist on my channel that goes over every single effect in Premiere Pro folder by folder, shows you what they are and what they do. So if you want to actually sample what they are. And if you do want to just get the presets and drag and drop them of all the, the dozens and dozens that I've created, I do have them for sale in bundles and packs on my website, justinodishow.com slash shop. So this has been a bunch of tips on mastering and using effects in Adobe Premiere Pro. If you enjoyed, let me know what you thought in the comments. Subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for future videos. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Justin Odisho, and I'll see you in the next video.